Our universe is ever-expanding, a notion that is as fascinating as it is humbling. As it expands continually, it becomes extremely challenging to define the universe's outer boundary or gauge its complete extent. Regardless of how far we peer into the universe, there will always be more. And yet, thanks to the incredible abilities of the James Webb Space Telescope, humankind now possesses a new pair of eyes, capable of looking into the most distant and oldest reaches of the universe. Ever since the James Webb Space Telescope was launched, scientists have been abuzz with revolutionary findings. Countless scientists, even the famous physicist Brian Cox, made shocking revelations about the actual size and enormity of the universe, a size so enormous that it tends to boggle the human mind. In the part of the universe that we can currently see, there are an estimated 2 trillion galaxies. This mind-boggling number is derived from deep-sky surveys and careful analyses of our immediate universe. Each one of these galaxies harbors billions, if not hundreds of billions, of stars, most with their own accompanying planetary systems. But what we can see is only a fraction, a thin slice, of the potentially boundless cosmos beyond our grasp. The visible universe is merely the tip of the iceberg, with the unimaginable vast majority lurking beneath the surface of the cosmos. Most importantly, we are not apart from the universe, we are in it. As Carl Sagan so wonderfully expressed it, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. In that poetic sense, we are not mere observers of the universe, we are its chroniclers. The atoms that form our bodies were created in the centers of long-dead stars. With further investigation, enabled by the James Webb Telescope and other new generation observatories, we are about to embark upon an unprecedented exploration of the universe's true size, history, and makeup. If you find these findings intriguing and wish to keep looking into the secrets of the universe, we challenge you to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to like this video and enable the notification bell so you never miss a space, science, and beyond update. To really understand just how vast even our own solar system is, let's start with a simple exercise. If you were to move at the constant rate of 70 miles per hour, the pace of a car on a highway, it would take you approximately 15 days to go around the Earth on its equator. Now, let's apply the same speed to space. Traveling to the moon would take approximately 5 months. Mars, at its nearest point, would take a 63-year trip. And Neptune, the farthest planet in our solar system, would take you a staggering 4,400 years to reach. These figures, though already astronomical, barely scratch the surface of what's out there. Let's look at Voyager 1, a spacecraft launched in 1977 that has been traveling at an astonishing 38,000 miles per hour for over four decades. Despite its incredible speed, it didn't exit our solar system until 2012, meaning it took 35 years just to cross that one boundary. Even light, the fastest thing in the universe, which can circle Earth seven times in a single second, begins to seem sluggish when we apply it to cosmic distances. Now consider our whole solar system as big as it can get. It's a mere small dot in the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way contains approximately 300 billion stars, each having dozens of planets, moons, and asteroids orbiting them. Our nearest neighbor star system, Alpha Centauri, is 4.3 light years away. That's 25 trillion miles, so far away, incidentally, that even a beam of light takes over four years to reach it. At the same velocity as Voyager 1, it would take around 70,000 years to make a journey to Alpha Centauri. These numbers start to give an idea of how stupendously large and lonely celestial bodies are from one another. Let's take Betelgeuse, for instance, a red supergiant star roughly 640 light years away from our planet. When we glance up at Betelgeuse in the evening sky, we're viewing it as it appeared 640 years ago, just about the time China was ruled by the Ming Dynasty and before Columbus left for the New World. That light has been floating through space all this time just to find your eyes tonight. And amazingly enough, in spite of all this vast distance, Betelgeuse is still nearby on the scale of the galaxy. Now, let's look at something just as interesting, our radio sphere. That's the part of space that our earliest radio and television signals have penetrated. Given that we started sending out signals about 100 years ago, those signals, albeit very weak, have traveled about 100 light years in every direction. 
that's a sphere covering roughly 15,000 star systems. And while that figure sounds impressive, it's literally a drop in the cosmic ocean, given that the Milky Way alone contains approximately 300 billion stars. To put this into perspective, imagine compressing our entire solar system to the size of a coin. On this scale, the Milky Way would span the whole United States. And within this continental-sized galaxy would be those 300 billion star systems, of which we're just one. Outside of our own galaxy is an even more staggering reality. Astronomers believe that the observable universe includes at least a trillion other galaxies. To make the size of a trillion understandable, suppose you have 1,000 cats. Now suppose 1,000 clusters of 1,000 cats, that's 1 million. Now take that and multiply it by 1 million. That's how many galaxies there are believed to be. It's a number so vast that it becomes theoretical, too big for the human imagination to get its head around. One such galaxy is Andromeda, our nearest galactic neighbor. It's 2.5 million light years away and hurtling toward us on a collision course with the Milky Way. Don't fret, though, it won't be here for another 4 billion years. When it does, the night sky will be different, and two enormous spiral galaxies will start to combine. Though the idea of such an impact seems violent, the distances between the stars are so vast that star-to-star -star collisions directly are improbable. Indeed, galactic collisions tend to produce bursts of star creation and the formation of new planetary systems. These dances in space, as anarchic as they seem, can also be fertile ground for life. Andromeda is one of a group of some 80 galaxies that constitutes the local group. Our local group belongs to an even larger conglomerate known as the Virgo Cluster, which comprises more than 1,500 galaxies. Zooming back further, we see that Virgo is only one segment of a titanic system named the Laniakea Supercluster. The supercluster holds perhaps 100,000 galaxies. Even with this broader view, we still are only observing a minor fraction of the universe that we know exists. Scientists estimate the observable universe has perhaps 10 million superclusters, and that is just the number we can observe using today's technology. With each new satellite, telescope, and sensor, we're charting more galaxies, more stars, and more formations. Yet we do know there are billions, maybe trillions, of other galaxies yet to be discovered. One of the secrets to deciphering the universe's past is the cosmic microwave background radiation, the faint glow from the Big Bang. The old light, dated at around 13.8 billion years, provides us with a snapshot of the universe when it was merely 380,000 years old. It's akin to a baby photo of the cosmos, providing crucial evidence as to its origin, makeup, and destiny. As we venture past galaxies, we discover gigantic areas of almost empty space called cosmic voids. These are huge areas measuring hundreds of millions of light years across, with hardly any galaxies. Even so, even these voids play an important part in the universe's makeup. They're rimmed and connected by cosmic filaments, giant strands of gas, dust, and dark matter that sweep through space, connecting galaxies into a gigantic, complex web. Matter in the cosmos is not evenly dispersed. Rather, it creates this cosmic lattice, a changing structure shaped by gravity over billions of years. In this cosmic tapestry, we find remarkable phenomena. Supernovae, enormous explosions marking the deaths of huge stars, dispersal of heavy elements vital for life. Black holes with their titanic gravity distort space and time and control the growth of galaxies. Quasars, supermassive black holes that devour matter, shed immense energy and are lighthouses from the early universe. These events don't merely structure galaxies, they structure the conditions that give rise to life. All of this brings us to one mind-bending question, what is beyond the observable universe? Because the universe is growing, there are parts so distant that their light hasn't had time to reach us yet, and perhaps never will. These unattainable regions may be filled with numbers upon numbers of galaxies, stars, and perhaps life. According to what we understand of physics and cosmology, researchers estimate that the whole universe might be at least 250 times larger than the portion we can see. And some theories propose that it could be actually infinite, without boundary or middle. This awakening compels us to think about where we fit in the larger plan. 
On a tiny, vulnerable planet revolving around one star in a small galaxy, we are led to ponder the existence of existence itself. The size of the universe doesn't render us insignificant, it brings us into relation with something so much more immense. Have you ever stopped to consider how big the universe really is? If you have, we hope this journey has helped you learn more about the universe and where we fit into it. We have only begun to scratch the surface of what is out there, and there is so much more to be discovered. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, leave your comments below, and share with others interested in the universe. And of course, subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so you never miss a trip into the stars. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.